Damian Lillard and Luka Doncic are easily one of the more entertaining point guards in the NBA. Scratch that, you could actually say the most entertaining players in the NBA. On one hand, you have Luka Doncic, who already in his second year has established himself as one of the greatest players in the league and a bona fide top 10 player in the NBA. And on the other hand, you have Damian Lillard, who has been able to cement himself with very clutch moments in the postseason, primarily in the 2019 year, and has also cemented himself as one of the better scorers that we have seen in NBA history. And in today's video, the boy wonder and Mr. Dame Dalla himself will be judged based on their play this past season, and we will come to the conclusion on who is the better player between the two. But without further ado, make sure you drop a like so I can keep making fire content just like this video. Let's shoot for a thousand likes. I definitely think that's possible because y'all have been killing it with the likes as of late. Also, do not forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell if you like what you see from this channel to be notified after each and every single video that I post. But without further ado, let's talk about Luka Doncic versus Damian Lillard. Pella switched on to Luka. Luka with the step back three. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Luka Doncic this season has been straight up sensational. The things that I have seen him do I have not seen done by many players in NBA history and it becomes more out of this world when you consider that he's only 20 years old. The guy literally can't even buy alcohol but he's schooling up adults on an NBA court as if they're jabrones. That's how great Luka Doncic is. This season he's putting up numbers of 29 points a game, 9 assists and 9 rebounds as well as a steal, shooting 46% from the field, 32% from 3, and also shooting 75% from the free throw line. This guy has been sensational in all aspects. As a playmaker, he is one of the best playmakers in the league, and also as a facilitator, I think not many players can match him in that category. As his basketball IQ is really through the roof, this is a guy that only a select few players can match him in that area, and night after night he continues to prove it as he keeps playing at a very high level and leading the Dallas Mavericks to more wins than a lot of us expected. And looking at what they've done this year, a lot of that is due to the play of Luka Doncic. And not only can he play make at a very high level and is one of the better ones in the league in that category, but he's also an exceptional rebounder and arguably the best one on his team, if not second behind Kristaps Porzingis. And as a scorer, we all know he is very deadly. His skill set is very versatile as he can do damn near everything that you want out of a score in the modern NBA. His handle is very solid which leads to him being able to create shots for himself and for others. As a finisher he's pretty good as he shoots 75% from 0 to 3 feet on the court and also as a 3 point shooter I think he's a bit underrated because of his 3 point percentage being affected due to his shot selection. Another thing about Luka Doncic this year though that a lot of people casually overlook is his impact on this Dallas Mavericks team. I know I mentioned it earlier but a lot of people do not understand that this team team would not be a great team if you remove Luka Doncic. They would be in the lottery because in the Western Conference with Porzingis having to battle injuries nagging throughout the year and him having to go through a little bit of struggles primarily in the beginning of the season because he did get it going towards the end. Combine that with the rest of the role players on this team because that's really what they are. Then you really just have a 30 win team in the Western Conference. That's basically what the Dallas Mavericks are without Luka Doncic and that's just a testament to how great he already is in the NBA being in his second season at the age of 20 years old and also speaks on his impact towards actually winning games in the NBA. Because how many times do we see great young players come in the league and they can put up numbers but they can't win? Players like Devin Booker, we're seeing it right now with Trey Young, not saying it's all entirely their fault, but to an extent it makes you appreciate guys like Luka Doncic because they are able to be the deciding factor in their team being a lottery team versus a team that's one of the best offenses that we have ever seen statistically and being a playoff team in one of the most stacked Western conferences in NBA history. But as far as the praising, that's really where it ends for Luka Doncic because there are a lot of flaws in his game and I think that we all know them. Defensively, he's not really that good whatsoever and at times can be a liability. 
If it wasn't for players such as Dorian Finney-Smith and Christos Porzingis, I think it would become an even more glaring issue and probably limit the amount of success that the Dallas Mavericks would see. Another thing that people overlook in his game that I honestly don't know why is his free throw ability because his free throw percentage is not as high as it should be, especially considering that he has the shooting range. So I don't know why he can't make free throws at at least an 80% clip or at least a little bit higher. He's shooting 75% from the free throw line this season on nine attempts a game. That's a little bit unacceptable. Actually, it is unacceptable for a player of his caliber, even if he's in his second year in the NBA, you gotta make free throws at a very high level. And Luka Doncic has just not been able to do that. Even if you watch the games, he's missed free throws in very critical situations. And I just honestly, to God, do not know why. And finally, the last criticism that I will give him is the fact that let's just just be honest here, he takes bad shots a lot. That is one of the reasons why he is so streaky from three and his three point percentage is so low. It's not because he's not good at shooting threes, it's because he's always on ball and takes a lot of contested three point shots. And yes, he has days where he's hot, but with a play style like that, you're gonna also have days where you're gonna be very cold. And that happens more often than not in the case of Luka Doncic. And hey, he's still being relatively efficient enough to get them some Ws as the Mavericks are one of the best teams in the league and he's shooting 58% from true shooting percentage but let's just be honest here in the playoffs that kind of system and that kind of play style doesn't convert to championships and for further proof of that go ask the Houston Rockets and James Harden but I think that wraps it up as it pertains to Luka Doncic so let's move on Lillard long range three and it's good at the Dame, Dame, Dame Dalla. What can I say more about the boy that is not already publicly known? This guy is a bona fide scorer, one of the best scorers in the NBA, got the range that is closest to Steph Curry among all the players, and honestly, when I watch him play, this dude does things that are just out of this world. This season, he's averaging 29 points a game, eight assists and four rebounds, while shooting 46% from the field, 39% from three on nearly 10 attempts a game, and shooting 89% from the free throw line. Offensively, he is getting the job done, even though the Blazers are outside of the playoffs at the ninth slot in the Western Conference. I do think a lot of that is credited due to injuries that they did suffer to players like Rodney Hood. They also suffered an injury to Zach Collins, and both of those players were very critical towards their success last year in the postseason primarily against the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Denver Nuggets. But I will not put the blame on Damian Lillard because even though he does have his faults, which we will get to in a second, I just brought up injuries as a big reason to why the Portland Trailblazers were kind of underachieving in the win and loss column. But I think CJ McCollum's play needs to be taken into consideration because as a score, he's been a little bit inconsistent and we all know CJ McCollum isn't really giving you much other than scoring. So if he's not consistent in that area, all of his other flaws become that much more of an issue and also I think defensively that team is just terrible they do not have one capable defender at all they still need a wing because of Rodney Hood's injury and honestly they've needed a wing for a very long time time. And excluding this season, even though this is probably the best statistical year that Damian Lillard has had, he has had multiple years where he has led the Portland Trailblazers to superseding expectations year after year after year. Just like last season, where they finished with the third best record in the Western Conference, won 53 games, and then Nurkic goes down with a very devastating leg injury, and then they have to start Enos Cantor at the center position, but they were still able to beat teams like the the Oklahoma City Thunder, who had Russell Westbrook and Paul George, who is a top five MVP candidate, finishing third in the race, and then in the second round beat the second seeded Denver Nuggets, led by another MVP candidate in Nikola Jokic, who finished fourth in the race. And I know the season ended very poorly for them, as in the Western Conference Finals, he underperformed, and CJ McCollum as well. But them being in the Western Conference Finals was a testament to how great Damian Lillard was throughout that entire postseason, and how we can uplift the team to doing more than the expectation. But I cannot praise Damian Lillard and overlook the many flaws in his game. Similar to Luka Doncic, as a defender, he is very poor in that area. One of the worst defenders, not only at his position, but in the NBA. There is literally absolutely
absolutely positively nothing that he brings on the defensive side of the ball that is worth talking about. That's really just how bad he is on the defensive side of the ball. And anybody that tries to defend him and says that he's improved, I think it's time for you guys to understand just because you've improved doesn't mean you're necessarily good all of a sudden. It's like a movie going from a 1 out of 10 to a 2 out of 10. Yes, a 2 out of 10 is better, but it's still a 2 out of 10. It's terrible. It's only at 20%. That's not a good movie. Similar to that of Damian Lillard. Yes, he may have gotten a little bit better, but he's still really bad. And as far as other issues that I have with Damian Lillard, I don't really have that many, but the one thing that I will point out because I think it is a fair criticism is the lack of postseason success outside of last year. Because Damian Lillard as a playoff performer, he does have his struggles. And I think the 2018 season was a perfect example of that as he was terrible against the New Orleans Pelicans and was outplayed by Drew Holiday. And the fact that he wasn't even able to have one good game which eventually led to them being swept by the sixth seed yeah that is very embarrassing but as far as that that's really the only criticisms that i have about damian lillard let's move on to who is the better player and i have come to my decision that's luka Doncic, and it isn't by much i'm not gonna say that it's by an overwhelming majority but luka Doncic, in my personal opinion is the better player between the two I think what he provides in offense with his versatility as a scorer and also because he is a little bit taller, his defensive inabilities can't be exploited to the extent of Damian Lillard's and I know we haven't seen Luka in the playoffs because for all we know he could be exposed for being some fraud but because Luka Doncic's production in my personal opinion is higher than that of Damian Lillard's in regards to this season, also taking into account that Damian Lillard is having a career year and it's still inferior to that of Luka's combined with the amount of success that Luka has seen and how he has elevated that Mavericks team from a lottery team to one of the best offenses statistically that the league has ever seen, I do have to give him some amount of credit and deem him a better player for the purposes of this video. But you guys in the comment section, let me know your opinions. If you disagree and you think Dame is better, let me know. Also drop some players that you would want me to compare. It doesn't have to be players in the NBA right now. It could be players in NBA history. I am open to all suggestions. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified after each and every single video that I post. Y'all have a beautiful day. Stay safe and wash your hands. I'm out. Peace.